What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet video. Sorry for two of these in a row, I mean, maybe I'm not sorry, it depends how much you guys like them, but with Scarlet and Violet around the corner, I actually have like a pretty big wish list of balance changes I really want to see included in the game because, man, when, when a new generation comes out, that's the only time we get balance changes. Like it, I mean, I guess with DLC, sometimes we get like, you know, move set updates, but it's it's mostly just buffs, like no, no nerfs or anything. But I, I just want to talk about some abilities that, you know, we have in the game that I think need a rework. Now, I got three nerfs and two buffs, so this video is kind of balanced. I didn't want to have it be all nerfs, uh, but yeah, notably, it's all Gen 8 ability nerfs because <laughs> a lot of this stuff was balanced with Dynamax in mind. So now that Dynamax is gone, I think it's pretty much mandatory that they do something different with the ability. So yeah, if you guys enjoy this at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Uh, and also be sure um, in, the in the description down below, uh, I'll be linking my uh, Instagram and my TikTok page. I actually just started both of those. Um, and you guys can actually see like some of the the YouTube shorts that I upload um, on both of those, but there's also gonna be a little bit of exclusive content. If you guys use either of those social media, you know, be sure to check it out. Anyways, let's get into it. And obviously, you know, comment down below what abilities you think need a rework. Don't say intimidate, don't say intimidate. You're gonna summon awful things upon us. That ability is perfect. Anyways, uh, so the first ability that I think needs like a major rework is actually gonna be Transistor. Now, I mentioned Regieleki in yesterday's video for Pokemon that I don't wanna see return. But it, I'll be honest, it's pretty much inevitable that uh, the legendaries all return with the DLC, at least most of them. Um, and yeah, Transistor is probably going to be back in the game. Here's my issue, right? So Transistor is a pretty powerful ability. It gives you basically a choice specs or choice band boost, depending on which stat you're using. If you're clicking Thunderbolt, you get 1.5 times special attack. If you're clicking Wild Charge, you get 1.5 times attack. Because of this, Regieleki is one of the most devastating mixed attackers in the game. Um, and honestly, its power level is fine without Dynamax, but I'd prefer it be tuned down a little bit. Um, being able to like one shot every water type in the game with, um, you know, just like Thunderbolt is a little bit absurd. Uh, being able to two shot things that just like don't have great special defense with Electro or Thunderbolt is a little bit gross. So, uh, my, my issue is that like life or bread, you like he has absurd damage output. Yes, it can't hit ground types. Yes, it gets walled out by like, you know, um, lightning rod Pokemon. But I think that going into gen eight, it would make sense to make transistor a life orb boost and not 1.5. It's still a devastating ability, don't get me wrong. You get life orb on either your physical or special attack, depending on which one you're using. But I think that, you know, it won't be nearly as devastating as it was in Gen 8, where you got basically a choice boost, which is, let's let's be honest, right? So like a choice boost comes with the downside of, oh, your choice locked into a move, but Regieleki getting it for free is a little bit gross. So I think the life orb boost is more than enough to keep this thing viable, especially with stats like this. Uh, yeah, and also the reason I say Life Orb is because it keeps it fair for uh, Regidrago, which will probably have the ability reworked as well if Regieleki gets its uh, reworked, since Regidrago has the same ability only for Dragon type moves. Uh, so yeah, I think that to keep it fair, 1.3 is like the perfect middle ground for both of these. Regidrago still has a devastating Dragon energy, and Regieleki isn't nearly as terrifying. So that's my idea for those guys. Uh, moving on to the second nerf, Urshifu. Rapid Strike and Urshifu Single Strike have the ability Unseen Fist. Now, Unseen Fist allows you to bypass Protect entirely. So, you know, the only exception is Max Guard. Max Guard is no longer in the game. So, if you are using a Pokemon against Urshifu in Generation 9, you don't have any way to bypass this ability. It's going to bypass your Protect. It's going to hit you with a Wicked Blow, Close Combat, whatever it needs to, and it's going to deal full damage. I think that ability is a little bit broken, especially on a Pokemon with stats like this, like 97 speed, 130 attack, and crit moves is a little bit gross, right? I think the only way that they can balance it while not getting rid of the ability entirely is to do what we did with Generation 7 Z moves or even with Dynamax moves. Um, with Gen 7 Z moves and Dynamax moves, if you protect versus them, it still bypasses the protect but it doesn't deal full damage and in a way it would be a callback to max moves like it's it's hitting like it's a max move right so there's some kind of multiplier on it to reduce the damage if you go with protect but this still allows the ability to be really really good because it means that focus sash pokemon you know they'll eat the first hit go down to focus sash and then like the next turn they're going to want to protect and have their partner deal with you well now that isn't an option like now you still 
are able to deal like that reduced damage, but still significant damage. Like you'll be able to pick off things that want to protect versus you. So I think that's like the best way to, you know, nerf the ability without completely breaking it uh, or making it completely unusable. But yeah, I mean, it's not like these guys really need the ability to function well. Honestly, like it, their sheer offensive pressure with like surging strikes and wicked blow is still absurd. Like these are some of the best choice band Pokemon in the game. So I think that's all they really need is tune down that ability so it doesn't deal as much damage through Protect, but it still bypasses the Protect. Finally, Zacian. Intrepid Sword. I honestly, I'm not even sure it's going to keep Rusted Sword. For all I know, like Zacian's going to lose like the crown form in the next game, but I really doubt it. Um, I think that Intrepid Sword should only activate once. I think that's the way that you, you make the ability fair. Uh, I, the fact that this thing just has to be intimidated twice to get that attack stat lower than 408 um is a little gross <laughs> or actually i'm sorry if it's adamant get that attack set lower than 448 after an intimidate it's it's oh no that's even wrong after an intimidate it's 482 after two intimidates it's lower that's a little gross right obviously you know it's able to ko things like incinera with close combat from neutral uh it's able to just hit everything with like fairy or steel moves like these are some of the best typings in the game to have offensively at your disposal so and it already has some like broken stats so if zacian crown stays in the game i think we're gonna have to like make it so intrepid sword can only activate once per game so you know you lead off with it you get intimidated oops well i guess you're at neutral you know it's basically a clear body for that first turn versus the intimidate or if you come in later on you get that plus one but if you switch out and come back in it doesn't activate again i think that's like probably the way that we're gonna have to do it i think that's definitely <laughs> like one of the few ways we're gonna be able to get zacian tuned down to the point where it'll be not a broken Pokemon in future games. Granted, uh, Zacian wasn't actually, I mean, it was that bad, but it wasn't as bad as when Dynamax was around. Because if you're unaware, Zacian's value comes from the fact that Behemoth Blade deals the same damage to Dynamax and non-Dynamax Pokemon. So where, you know, a Dynamax Pokemon will usually take half damage due to having double HP, Behemoth Blade doubles in power, making it so it's the exact same damage calc. So, yeah, that's the main value of it. So when Dynamax Pokemon are gone, Behemoth Blade isn't nearly as valuable, which is why, you know, Zacian usage actually kind of fell a little bit when Dynamax was banned uh, in Series 10. It was still really good, don't get me wrong. Um, but when Dynamax is gone, like, there's not as much of a, you know, I, I, I don't want to say it. It wasn't as mandatory, you know? So you could get away with not using it. But yeah, uh, I think Zacian just needs that little bit of balance to make it still a busted legendary, but not be where it is right now. All right, so enough with the negative stuff. Uh, let's talk about positives. I think that these two abilities need some uh, need some buffs. I almost said nerfs again. But uh, these abilities are abilities that are absolutely useless in competitive battles. Run away, no competitive use, and illuminate, no competitive use. And honestly, by you know buffing these abilities, we can actually get some pretty cool Pokemon. So my idea for Runaway is an idea that I've seen a lot. Um, there's an item in the game called the Shed Shell. Now Shed Shell means that you can't be trapped by Shadow Tag, Arena Trap, Magnet Pole, none of that. It makes it so you just, you're always able to switch out. Uh, there's nothing that can keep you in. Now, I think that as an item, it's hard to find a reason to run that in VGC. I think maybe we've seen like Shed Shell Celestilo once in like 2017 or maybe 2018. Uh, when there was a little bit of counterplay with that with like Magnezone. Um, it wasn't common though, obviously. It was like a bad item, but you would have situationally to beat Magnezone. Uh, but I think that if we're going to get that item to be somewhat relevant, uh, I think buffing Runaway to make it basically a built-in Shed Shell isn't that bad. And honestly, there are lots of abilities that are just built-in items. Overcoat is a built-in safety goggles. Um... I, I don't I don't know. There's there's other ones. Trust me, there are other ones. I'm just forgetting them right now. But yeah, having a built-in shed shell is really nice because it would make all the runaway Pokemon able to switch out versus stuff like Gothitelle or uh well Mega Gengar is not in the game, but like you know, Arena Tretmon. So that means Dunsparce has a little bit of a niche in the fact that it can switch out on those Pokemon. The Rapidashes can switch out, Thievil can switch out. Uh, as for other Pokemon that like might be in the game that can get it. Uh, now you'll be able to switch out your Pachirisu versus Trapping Pokemon, Dodrio, Raticate. Obviously, these aren't like the most common competitive Pokemon. They're pretty niche, uh, if not just outright awful. But having that ability isn't bad, you know, that is a good option for these. And for all we know, we might get like more Route 1 Pokemon that have Runaway in the next game that could make use of it. So yeah. And my final ability that I want to talk about today is uh, Illuminate. 
Now, Illuminate has no competitive use. If I remember correctly, it like makes it easier to find wild Pokemon in, you know, the casual game. Ooh, very cool. Uh, but Illuminate, I think, would be a bit of a weird move to like, or a bit of a weird ability to find a use for, but I did think of one. Uh, I think that when Illuminate is active, it should work as like a, in a not AoE, but you know, like Fairy Aura makes it so that like, you know, all Fairy type moves have a boost in power. Um, I think Illuminate should make it so the entire field ignores um, evasion increases and accuracy drops. I think it should be like, if, if it's on the field, right? Like, okay, well now, like if you're facing minimized Chansey, you can switch in your Illuminate Pokemon and hit it despite the fact that, you know, this thing has been minimizing and like it has crazy evasion. Or maybe when Illuminate's on the field, it's a counter to like Sand Veil or um, Snow Veil or whatever those abilities are. Uh, but I think that it would only make sense if it wasn't just for your team, but like the whole team or like the whole field. I think, you know, thematically that's how Illuminate should work. And, you know, if we make Illuminate actually like a decent ability, uh, there are some Pokemon that would gain a little bit of a niche from that. Starmie, as good as Natural Cure and Analytic is, um, there are, you might be able to find a use for it uh, as an Illuminate Pokemon, depending on how the metagame shapes up. Lantern obviously gets something other than the two immunities that it has. Um, Shinotic gets like an ability. Actually, that would, that would, I think Shinotic's like the prime example of a Pokemon that could use this, uh, since it would make it so like it's able to land its spores versus like uh, evasion boosting Pokemon like, you know, Chansey. Um, and other Pokemon that exist, you know, Volbeat, Watchhog, those aren't going to see too much usage, especially since Volbeat has Prankster. Like, that's already, like, a top-tier ability, so, yeah. Anyways, I just thought I would make a quick video about, like, my little wish list of abilities I'd like to see reworked in Scarlet and Violet. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Um, I'll actually have some, like, I, I don't know how many of you guys, like, like the battle videos more than the discussion videos. Obviously, I think most of you are here for, like, the lore and, like, essay videos that I make, and honestly, that's what I'm here to make more than anything, but... Uh, tomorrow we'll have like a battle video or something just to, you know, get the, uh, get a change of pace going. I feel like I've been doing a lot of Scarlet and Violet discussion, but obviously if you want more discussion, comment down below stuff that you want me to talk about referring to Scarlet and Violet as to like, you know, Pokemon I want to see buffed, Pokemon I want to see nerfed, just different things. Anyways, yeah. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.